Hello ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Olson from TextLearn.com here, and this is lesson 6.2 of the Intro to Java series. We will be discussing exception handling. So what is an exception? The Oracle Docs defines an exception as being an event which occurs during the execution of a program which disrupts the normal flow of instructions. So basically that just means that an exception is some type of a problem or error that comes up when we are running the program. And some common examples of exceptions are array index set of bounds exceptions, which occur when we try to access an element in an array that is not there. So for example, we could have try to access array index 20 of an element or an array that only has 10 elements. And that would throw an array index set of bounds exception because we're trying to access something which isn't there. An I.O. exception is a general exception for any type of input-output error that occurs when we were running the program, and that's what we threw in the last section with our main method. We said the main method throws an I.O. exception, so that quite simply meant that this method can have a problem with I.O. that might occur. The file not found exception is a more specific type of I.O. exception, which occurs when the file cannot be found. A runtime exception is a generalized exception for any error that occurs during runtime. And an arithmetic exception is a specific runtime exception which occurs when something goes wrong with arithmetic, like dividing by zero, for example. So those are just some types of exception. There are more, but those are ones you'll probably run into at some point. So to correct things that go wrong in our program, we can use these try-catch blocks. For example, we might try to open a file and then if something goes wrong like we get a file not found exception we can catch that exception using this catch block down here and then we can correct the problem and have the user enter another file name and try to open that file instead things like that so the try block is the code statements that we are trying to do and the catch is where we catch the exception so if something goes wrong in the try block, that try block throws an exception and then it gets caught with this catch block. So we catch the exception here and this is just a generic exception. So if we use the word exception there, exception E, that'll catch any exception that could possibly go wrong. And then we could handle that within the catch block. So the finally block is the code that always gets executed. So in our example, we could try to open a file in the try block we catch what goes wrong in the catch block. And then finally, in the finally block, we make sure that that file input stream gets closed. This will make a little more sense once we take a look at how it all works. So let's pull up Eclipse and I'll go over a quick example here. So first things first, let's try to open a file. So we'll use a file input stream just like the last time. And we're gonna call that input. And we're just going to leave that as null for now. So we're just declaring this variable. We're not really initializing it yet. And I already imported the file input stream from java.io. So make sure that is imported into your program. OK, then we have our try block here. So we're going to try to open this file. And to do that, we'll just use input equals new file input stream. And we'll go ahead and open a file that I know is not there. So let's do does not exist. There's no file in my project directory called does not exist. So I know that doesn't exist. And we'll catch an exception. So when we try to open that file, it's going to throw specifically a file not found exception. But I'm just going to leave this as a generic exception for now. So I can show you the e.printStackTrace method. And what this does is it just prints out the error message of what went wrong. So that's the kind of generic way to do it. And it prints out this red message here that says does not exist, file not found exception. And that's kind of like what happens whenever something goes wrong anyway. We see something that looks like this. But this is actually calling that to print that out. So if instead we got rid of that and we just said system out print line something went wrong and that with semicolon now instead of printing out all that red text it's just going to print out something went wrong because something went wrong 
it caught that exception and then it went to this code. So now we're not printing out that stack trace anymore. So no red message gets printed for the user. Okay, and we did know that that was a file not found exception. So we can add another catch block to catch that. So we'll do catch file not found exception E. And I do have to import the file not found exception. We'll use a quick fix to do that. I'll scroll up and show you that. And we have two import statements now. We have the file input stream and the file not found exception. So now instead of just catching a generic exception, we're going to catch that specific exception. Do system out print line file not found. So now we know that the file wasn't found and we run the program and instead of printing out something went wrong, it instead went to this block here because the file was not found. That's a more specific type of exception. So Java knows to go to that one first. So instead of executing something went wrong, it executed the file that or the line that printed out file not found. So we have this file not found message instead of the something went wrong message. So those in short is how the exception works or exception handling works. And we do want to put a finally block in here. So finally if input is not equal to null so we have if the input stream was not or was not closed essentially so if if this got initialized for whatever reason and we didn't close it then we we know we have to close it here now so we can do input dot close and this is going to be underlined in red and that's because when we try to close the input stream it's possible that something could also go wrong there so we can do what we did last time in the previous section where we just had the main method throw an IO exception, but we're not going to do that this time. We're actually going to handle that within the main method so we don't have to have that throws up there. So we handle the exception down here with another try catch. And we try to close it, and if we can't close it, we'll just print out that error message that print stack trace. So that, in short, is how the try-catch works. So now let's talk about trying to open a file and print out its contents, and then we'll correct the error because we want the user to enter a different file name if the file cannot be found. So in order to do that, what we can do now is we'll have to create a scanner, user input, because we want the user to type a file name into the console equals new scanner and then we're going to try to open that file system.in so we create a new scanner and of course I have to import the scanner class so that is imported now and we're going to do in the try block we're going to say system out print line enter file to open okay so we have that set up so we're trying to open up a file here and we'll have a string file name equals user input dot next line. So we'll get the name of the file that we want the user to open, or we want the program to open. And then we'll try to open that file using the file input stream. So now we have input equals new file input stream with that file name. So enter file to open, and we try opening it. Now we just have to print out contents. So they print out the contents of that file. So I have an integer i, a character c, just like in the previous section. We're going to read those bytes and cast them into characters and then print out each character. So we'll have while input.read. Well, actually, we have to do while i equals input.read. So we're reading those bytes of data from the input stream. While i equals input.read is not equal to negative 1, so while we are able to read from that file until we hit the end of it, we'll cast that c equals char i, so we'll cast that integer byte into a character, and then we'll do system out.print, and we'll just print out that character. So reading each thing one character at a time, one byte at a time and printing out the character to the console. 
So that'll read the file for us there. So we try to open the file and print out its contents, and then we catch the file not found exception. So if we can't find the file, what we can do is we'll just do system out print line, try again. And what we'll do here is we'll just call the main method. And this is the first time I'm showing you this, but we can actually call the main method from inside of our program. And this will basically just say, okay, stop what we're doing. Let's go back to the main method, start back from the top and start doing everything over again. So then it'll try to ask them to put a new file name in, and then we'll try to print that out instead. And we have to have the null in there because we don't have any parameters for our arguments, but we do have to put something there. So we'll just leave that as a null for now. And we'll talk a bit more about this stuff in the next topic, object-oriented programming. But for now, just understand that this is how we can call that main method. So we do that. And finally, we do need to close that scanner. So user input.close. Can leave all that the same. And let me just make sure we have everything in here the way it's supposed to. So we have our main method. We have our input, our user input scanner. We try to open the file that the user types in. Then we print out the file contents. If we could not find the file, we print out a message that says file not found, try again. We call the main method, we start over. If something else goes wrong, some other type of exception occurs, we just print out a message that says something went wrong. And then finally, we close the user input scanner. And then if the input stream for the file has not been closed yet, we try to close that. And if something goes wrong there, we print out a message that just the, the red error message with print stack trace. So let's take a look at this. We'll run the program, enter a file to open, and I'll do use test.txt. It says file not found, try again. And then we enter a file to open, another, and that's also not a file in there. So let's find a file that is in that directory, 62. And here I have this file called file does exist.txt with just random junk in it. So let's try that now. File does exist.txt. Hit enter and it printed out the contents of the file and that ended the program there because there was no exception so it didn't go and rerun anything. We just closed everything off and that was the end of the program. So those are exceptions. If you have any problems with that feel free to contact me either in the comments for this video the forums on my website, or the comments on the section page on the website. Now, the review exercise for this section, review exercise 6.2, we're going to keep working on this word counter program, but we want to modify it from the previous section, so now we're going to have it ask the user which file they would like to open, and we're going to basically do what I just did in my example, we're going to say if we can't find it, we're going to print out a message that said the load failed. Which file would you like to run the word count on? We enter a new file name, we load it, and the file is found. And then we print out how many times each word occurred in that file. So now instead of just having the file name hard coded into our program, we're asking the user specifically which file they would like to open. And we're using some exception handling here to take care of if the file's not found, we ask them to give us a new file name. All right, so that concludes this lesson. I hope you learned something and take care.